In this next problem, we have a sealed cylinder of gas. Now, in a cylinder of gas, the volume can't change because if it did, the whole thing would explode. We don't want that to happen. So again, as far as a gas law problem is concerned, you set up the equation first. Then you make your data table. Then you start plugging in numbers. A cylinder of gas with a pressure of 8.0 atmospheres is heated from 300 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin. Volume is constant because it's in a cylinder. What will the new pressure of the gas be? Volume goes bye-bye. Okay, we're trying to solve for P2, which is in the numerator. So multiply both sides by T2 to get it out of there, and now the units for temperature will cancel and leave you with the units for pressure. T2, 600 Kelvin. P1, 8.0 atmospheres. Over T1, 300 Kelvin. Kelvin cancels, leaving us with atmospheres, which is what we're looking for, because we're looking for the new pressure. 600 and 300 simplifies to 2 over 1. 2 times 8 is 16. And that's to 2 sig figs, because 8.0 is 2 sig figs. And that makes sense. If you double the temperature, you'll double the pressure, because it's a direct relationship. Okay, now we've got a cylinder that we have to prevent from bursting. Woohoo! The pressure of the gas is this and this. To what temperature can you heat it before the cylinder bursts? In other words, what's the maximum temperature that this cylinder can withstand before going kaboom? So again, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. P1 V1 T1, P2 V2 T2. A cylinder of gas, okay, we can get rid of volume because volume is fixed can withstand a pressure of 50 atmospheres before bursting. The pressure of the gas at 300 Kelvin is 10.0 atm. To what temperature can the gas be heated before the cylinder bursts? 50.0 atm. Again, volume is constant, so we ignore it. And we're trying to solve for temperature, which is in the denominator. Get it out of the denominator by cross multiplying. T2, P1 equals T1, P2 equals T1, P2. Now to get T2 by itself, divide both sides by P1. And that way the units for pressure will cancel and leave you with the units for temperature. T1, 300 Kelvin. P2, 50.0 atmospheres over P1, 10.0 atmospheres. Atmospheres go bye-bye. 50 and 10 simplifies to 5 over 1. 300 times 5, well that's 3 times 5 is 15, so this is 1500. 1500 Kelvin. And we want 3 sig figs, there's your 3 sig figs. You make the pressure 5 times greater, you're going to need the temperature to be 5 times greater. Direct relationship. Combine gas law problem. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. A 4.0 liter sample of gas has a pressure of 300 kilopascals at a temperature of 250 Kelvin. What will the volume be if the pressure is increased to 500 kilopascals and the temperature is decreased to 200 Kelvin? So we're trying to solve for V2. Nothing is constant. We keep everything. So to get V2 by itself, we multiply both sides by T2 and divide both sides by P2. That way the units for temperature cancel and the units for pressure cancel and we're left with the units for volume. T2 is 200 Kelvin. P1 is 300 kilopascals. V1 is 4.0 liters over P2 is 500 kilopascals times T1 which is 250 Kelvin. If the temperature is given to cel in Celsius you must first convert it to Kelvin because kilopascal starts at zero, liter starts at zero, you need a temperature scale that starts at zero and that's Kelvin. Let's plug these in. 200 times 300 times 4 
equals, divide that by 500, equals, divide that by 250, equals 1.92, but because there's two sig figs here, we're going to make that 1.9. Kelvin cancels, kilopascals cancel, leaving us with liters. 1.9 liters is the final volume. A 3.00 liter sample of gas at STP, we'll come back to that, is heated to 546 Kelvin, and the volume is increased to 4.00 liters. What is the new pressure of the gas? Okay, STP, standard temperature and pressure, right? Find it on reference table A, right? So let's see. Our second temperature is 546 Kelvin, so that's right, Kelvin, we have to keep it in Kelvin. 273 Kelvin is standard temperature. How do I know that? Standard temperature, 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure? Well, our second pressure is not in anything, so we could choose atmospheres or kilopascals. I like to keep things easy. 1.00 atm. How do I know it's 1.00 atm? Reference table A. Standard pressure, 1 atm. There we go. So, we're trying to solve for P2. So, multiply both sides by T2 to cancel out the division. Divide both sides by V2 to cancel out the multiplication. And now P2 is all by itself. T2 is 546. P1 is 1.00 atmospheres. V1 is 3.00 liters. Over. V2 is 4.00 liters times T1, which is 273 Kelvin. Look what happens. Kelvin cancels, liters cancel, and leave us with atmospheres, which is what we're trying to look for. You could have also put in 101.3 kilopascals into here, and that would have been perfectly legitimate. And that gives us an answer of 1.5. ATMs is our final pressure of the gas. Except we're not done. Three sig figs, 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 1.50 atmospheres. Don't forget your sig figs. Okay, one more problem to try. A 6.0 liter sample of gas exerts a pressure of 100 kilopascals at 400 Kelvin. To what temperature, X, must the gas be changed for both the volume and pressure to double? So we're going to double the pressure, we're going to double the volume. So let's see. It says for both the volume and pressure to double. So double 100, that's 200. Double 6 is 12. Two sig figs, two sig figs. So I'm just keeping it to the same number of sig figs. Now we're trying to solve for T2. But T2 is in the denominator, so we have to cross multiply. T2, P1, V1 equals T1, P2, V2. Trying to solve for T2, divide both sides by P1, V1, P1, V1. And now all we have to do is plug in our numbers. T1, P2, V2 over P1 times V1 now we can plug this into the calculator, but look how nicely some of these things simplify. Like uh, 200 and 100 simplifies to 2 over 1. You could have done the 400 and the 100 also. 12 and 6 simplify to 2 over 1. So in some cases, you don't even need to pull out a calculator. Just simplify. 400 times 2 is 800 times 2 is 1600. And since kilopascals cancel and liters cancel, that leaves us with Kelvin. Let's see, sig figs, two sig figs, two sig figs, we're good to go. And that's how to solve gas law problems. As you can see, they all get solved exactly the same way. The only difference is, what is it you're trying to solve for? And for that, you need algebra.